Here I've got a nice polynomial problem, and it comes from the Southeast Math Olympiad. The year was 2013, and this is a Math Olympiad given in China. So our goal is to find the minimum value of this rational expression, which is a bit complicated. We've got 2a cubed minus 3ab plus 3a all over b plus 1. Given the condition that this cubic polynomial has three positive real roots, this cubic polynomial is defined in terms of these numbers a and b. So we've got x cubed minus ax squared plus bx minus a equals zero. So that thing needs three positive real roots. Then we want to find the minimum of this rational expression. Okay, so let's start by factoring this thing. Obviously, we don't know exactly how it factors, but we can like give some names to the roots. We have x cubed minus ax squared plus bx minus a equals x minus r1 x minus r2, finally x minus r3, where r1, 2, and 3 are positive real numbers. So I'll just write that as r sub i is in the real numbers with the plus there to mean positive. Now next, let's multiply out this right hand side and then equate some coefficients. So notice we get x cubed and then our x squared term will be negative r1 plus r2 plus r3 times x squared. And so that's pretty clear because we choose one of the constants and two of the x's. And then we have plus r1 r2 plus r1 r3 plus r2 r3 times x. And then finally, minus r1 times r2 times r3. And now we see that a is equal to this sum and this product, while b is equal to this combination of terms that are quadratic in terms of our roots. So let's summarize that here. We have a equals r1, r2, r3, and it's equal to r1 plus r2 plus r3. Okay, nice. But then we also know what b is. b is going to be equal to r1, r2 plus r1, r3 plus r2, r3. And now the fact that a takes on the value of the product of these three numbers and the sum of these three numbers really screams out that we should maybe use the arithmetic geometric mean inequality. So I'll write that here. We're using the AMGM mean inequality. Okay, so first off, we see that the cube root of a will be equal to the cube root of r1, r2, r3, but that's the geometric mean of these three numbers. That's in fact going to be less than or equal to the arithmetic mean of these three numbers, which is r1 plus r2 plus r3 all over 3. But that's equal to a over 3. So notice we've set up an inequality that involves a, which is actually quite nice because we can use that to get a minimum value for a. So let's just do that. So we've got three times the cube root of a is less than or equal to a. That's suspiciously looking like a nine. But we can cube both sides of this inequality. That'll leave us with 27a is less than or equal to a squared. Okay, but then moving some things around, we see that a squared is bigger than or equal to 27. Notice that we're allowed to divide by a because we know a is a positive real number given that r1, r2, and r3 are positive real numbers. Okay, great. But now we can just take the square root of both sides and we get a is bigger than or equal to three times the square root of three. Okay, so that's where we are so far. Let's move that to the top and we'll get some sort of bound on B. Among other things, we have so far determined that A must be bigger than or equal to three times the square root of three. We also know that A is the sum of the roots of this polynomial, so R1 plus R2 plus R3, and B is this combination of things that are quadratic in the roots of the polynomial, so R1, R2 plus R1, R3 plus R2, R3. 
Now we want to mash this stuff together to get some sort of bounding on B. So let's notice that if we square A, which is that sum, we will get some terms that look like B. So let's do that. So if we take A squared, that's the same thing as R1 plus R2 plus R3 quantity squared. But then foiling that out or remembering what happens when you square a trinomial, we will get R1 squared plus R2 squared plus R3 squared plus two times the quantity R1, R2, R1, R3, and R2, R3. And that's actually pretty nice because this guy right here is equal to B. So if we can do something with this to make it in terms of B as well, then we're good to go. And I think there's maybe an easy way to do this and maybe post in the comments if you guys have a strategy for coming up with this inequality that's simpler than what I'm about to do. But you know, this is what I'll do. Okay, so I'm gonna take this bit right here which is r1 squared plus r2 squared plus r3 squared. And notice that it is exactly the dot product of r1, r2, r3 with itself. So r1, r2, r3 dot r1, r2, r3. Then I'm gonna bring the rest of this down. So this is plus two times b. But next, we know that this is gonna be bigger than or equal to the dot product of r1, r2, r3 with some other vector that has the same length because the dot product is maximized along parallel vec vectors and these are parallel vectors. Now you may say, well, maybe we need to worry about some absolute values here or something, but we don't in this case because all of these entries are positive. So I'll take this R1, R2, R3, and I'll dot it into R2, R3, R1. And then we need to still add this 2B on. So just to reiterate, the dot product is maximized along parallel ve vectors. And so if we replace this vector that is parallel to R1, R2, R3 with another vector of the same norm, then we must get something that is less. But now notice if we take that dot product, we get R1, R2 plus R2, R3 plus R1, R3. And then finally plus a 2B. But this guy right here is just another copy of B. So we've got B plus 2B, which is 3B. So let's see what we've got. We've got 3B is less than or equal to A squared. And so that's our next fact. We'll take that, bring it to the top, and we're ready to finish it off. So let's see where we are so far. We've got a is bigger than or equal to three times the square root of three. And then a squared is bigger than or equal to three b. And then our goal is to minimize this object right here. So two a cubed minus three a b plus three a all over b plus one. So we'd probably like to manipulate this thing so that we can use these inequalities up here nicely. That's exactly what we'll do. So I'm gonna take this and I'll write it as 3a cubed plus 6a minus 3ab minus 3a all over b plus one. You might say, well, what is my motivation for that? Well, the motivation for that is I want to pair something with this minus 3ab term so that I can factor out of it and get something which is b plus one. And that's exactly what I can do here. So notice all of that stuff that is overlined in pink can be rewritten as minus 3a times the quantity b plus one. And then we can do some factoring from these first two terms as well. Let's notice that we can factor out a 2a and we're left with a squared plus three. Okay, so now let's start simplifying this. We have this is equal to 2a times a squared plus three over b plus one minus three times a times b plus one over b plus one. 
So obviously we probably want to cancel these two B plus ones and then work on this term right here. But now this quotient looks a little bit tricky to work with, but we haven't used this second inequality yet. So let's use the second inequality to develop something which will help us deal with that quotient. So I'll add three to both sides. That'll leave me with a squared plus three is bigger than or equal to three times b plus one, where I just went ahead and factored the b plus one out of that. Now I can divide by b plus one, and I see that a squared plus three over b plus one is bigger than or equal to three. And that's really nice because we have an inequality involving this term right here, which looked pretty tricky. So that means I can replace that with three if I include an inequality. So I've got two a times three, which is six a minus three a. So this is gonna be equal to three a. But furthermore, we know a is bigger than or equal to three times the square root of three. So this is bigger than or equal to nine times the square root of three. So looking at the extreme left and right hand side of this equation, it seems like the minimum of what we're looking for is equal to nine times root three. But actually there's a big question mark here because we don't know that that's the minimum until we find values of A and B that achieve that minimum. And so it's not too hard to check that this is gonna be achieved at the points that are given by these inequalities up here. So first off, A is equal to three root three and then whichever value of b we would get out of that, and I'll let you guys check this, but it's easy to check that that is b equals nine. Now, if you throw this out value of a and this value of b back into our original setup, we'll get nine root three, so we achieve that minimum. And that's a good place to stop.